Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another Daily Drop here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones. And the topic today, Carolina basketball, as we continue to preview the scholarship Tar Heels ahead of the official start to the season, which is November 4th at home against Elon. It wasn't Memphis the other night. It's Elon, November 4th. So we continue to roll out all of our preview articles and our preview podcast here, The Daily Drops, as I talk about each of the Tar Heels. And Jacob and I will have a big basketball show next week. No basketball show this week because we record them usually on Wednesday. I'm in Memphis on Tuesday. Got a lot of stuff doing. I come back. We decided we already had a three things. No need to do a basketball show this week. Beginning next week, we will have a weekly basketball show pretty much through the rest of the season and probably well into April next year and of course next week we'll pick up the weekly football show which we did not do this past this week because the Tar Heels are in an open date okay Ian Jackson let's talk about the freshman a freshman I was impressed with when I talked to him about a week and a half ago well I guess now it's two weeks ago with uh, this running on Friday I was really impressed he was humble very confident and humble and confident for an 18 year old is really impressive And Carolina's had guys like that. They've had guys that are humble and very confident. Kobe White was humble and very confident. Very so. I thought that. I thought that at times, early on, Cole Anthony was that way. I I thought after a while, Cole was wasn't. I wouldn't say he wasn't humble. He just he knew that he was the guy and he had to talk about things in terms of being the guy. So kind of had to skip over that because that team was struggling. It was he and Garrison. Then Cole got hurt, took a lot of stuff away from him. But Ian, Ian's a different kind of guy because he's incredibly athletic. He's long. He's six four one ninety. looks thinner because he's longer. And he's really got a frame that he could add a lot to. You know, I was watching him work out. I ran a lot of photos of him. I took a lot of stuff of him early in the practice that we got to watch and put him out there on Twitter and put him on our website. And there's just this aura about him, the way he carries himself. That, okay, he might be thinner than a lot of guys he's going to bang against this year, but he's going to get those balls. He's going to play off contact because there's a little dog in there that you can – it's a combination of confidence but not boasting – and knowing he's going to get the job done and self-assuredness. And there's a lot of different things you could put under the umbrella of confidence that he carries himself with. And it just sticks out. And I've, I've been doing this a long, long time. And I've seen a lot of freshmen come in. I've seen a lot of freshmen come in that are highly ballyhooed that don't give me, uh, didn't give me the same vibe that Ian Jackson did. Now, let me qualify something. I'm not saying he's going to be an incredible player and have an all ACC season one and done. He's out. Maybe he is one done. He has been thinking about the NBA. He is thinking about it. He didn't shy away from that. When I actually asked him a question about what he's using this season to get himself ready for the draft, and his answer was he wants to win. He says, if you win, everything takes care of it. That's a very impressive thing for a kid to say that hadn't played a game yet. For a kid that I don't think was coached up a whole lot. In our coverage of the recruitment of Ian Jackson, David Sis did an amazing job covering that. He was exceptionally well-sourced in multiple levels around Ian, including talking to Ian a lot himself. And we kept hearing the same thing, incredible work ethic, very confident kid, but confident within himself. And that's what you want because there's some old dudes in this team that are the guys. This is R.J. Davis's team, all right? Seth Trimble's got some of that now. Jalen Washington has some of it. Jalen Withers going to be 24 years old this season. He's got a lot of that. Elliot Cadeau already started a year in the ACC as a point guard. So I think the thing that really is, impresses me about Ian as well is that he kind of knows his place right now. You know, when, when Cole came in, he came into a situation, looked around and said, well, I'm the guy. Ian may end up being the best player on the roster down the road, but he's not right now, and he's not – that's not his focus. His focus is doing the little things. He said the biggest adjustment wasn't so much basketball. It was up here. And that's what you want to hear from a kid because he's saying, I don't know it all. I've got this amazing talent, this gift. 
and this gift that I have to continue to harness, but I don't know it all. That to me, and I'm not even talking about his finishing at the rim. I'm not talking about the kind of defensive player he can be. I'm not talking about how much he's improved his three-point shooting. I'm not talking about that crossover into the lane. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I'm talking about up here and here because he's got that other stuff. It's this is what's going to make him a very productive teammate on this team and do whatever he has to do to help this team win. He doesn't have to be a 20 point guy. Like maybe had he gone some other places, they'd want him to be. And that's probably better for his growth to be this kind of player. And it's going to be really, really interesting to watch how that evolves during the course of the year. He's going to have some explosive nights. He's going to have some nights where he doesn't do much. People are like, God, they didn't get anything from Jackson. Leave all that stuff alone. Allow him to find his comfort with this group and to pick his spots when he's going to be more productive than, say, other nights when he's less productive. He might have games where he plays a lot more than other games simply because of the matchups and circumstance. Will he start? I don't know. I would be a little surprised because I think that they have nice parts they can run out there first. And Hubert, going to lean on the older guys, a lot like Dean did, a lot like Roy did. But it doesn't matter. He's going to play. He's going to have an opportunity to have a big role. And if he doesn't have a huge role early, do not complain about Hubert. Do not complain about him. Just let it play out. I know that as a Baltimore Orioles fan – I have very little patience, so I get it. I get what it's like to not have patience. But I also understand, it being baseball, that it's a marathon, not a, not a sprint. And a college basketball season is that way, too. The NCAA tournament's five months away. Just let this stuff play out. Let Ian Jackson have time to become whatever Ian Jackson is going to become with this basketball team. Because you know what he can bring them. He can bring them a dude who can finish at an exceptionally high level in transition. He can finish in the half court. He can get into the lane. He's got an amazing crossover. He's very fast, very quick, very bouncy, very elastic. And he can get to the rim. He can get the ball over people. He can get by people. He can pull up. And that perimeter shot, which was an issue a couple of years ago, his his high school coach told David Sis that Ian's worked his rear end off on that perimeter shot. And Ian says it's good now. We'll hold him to it. You know, he doesn't have to shoot 38% from out there, but if he's at 33 with all that other stuff, you're going to have to honor every aspect of his game, and he's going to create under those circumstances. He's going to blow by guys. He's going to stop, pull up, and hit. He's going to do things that show you, wow, this, this guy in five or six years could be unreal. That's the kind of player he is. He says he likes to play defense. He says he can be really good defensively. I think that Drake Powell getting all the love of the freshman coming in about being the defensive guy. I think Ian looks over there and says, hey, wait a minute. I I can do that too. That's the impression I got. So he likes that little challenge. So it'll be very interesting to see when Hubert says, man up. Get over that screen, man. Don't go under it. It'll be very interesting to see how he evolves in that aspect of the game as well. Because if he ends up playing a lot of minutes, he's going to have to be consistently good on that end of the floor. If you're excited about what Ian Jackson could provide Carolina this year, and I do think it's a wide range and it could be a wide range from game to game, go ahead and click like on this video. If you are excited about Ian Jackson just in general, click like on this video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel if you haven't. Tell your Tar Heel friends that we're here. Let them know that we're dropping stuff like crazy and we're there. We go where the Tar Heels go, guys. I was in Memphis. We go where the Tar Heels go. So if you want the inside stuff, you got to come here because we will always provide it for you. I'm AJ, and I absolutely appreciate y'all stopping by. Thanks.